All right, guys, Bill Furbish, Chicken Fried Barbecue. We're at a competition here in Angleton, Texas, so we're gonna trim a brisket. I'm gonna show you how I separate a point and a flat. So this is a Midland meat, uh, Midland meat brisket. So we're gonna open this guy up. I always kind of open from the, from the bottom here. Let me actually move this over to a pan. Just in case if I accidentally start it, but grab a glove over here. And the way I separate it, man, I always wear this, one of these like, I guess cut resistant. And you'll know why when you see the way I trim. Uh, I've cut my hand one too many times. So on my left hand, I always throw that guy underneath there. We'll yank this guy out. So I always kind of start on this side, which to me, this is the bottom. I think everybody's got different interpretations because I cook, I'll cook fat side down, but I, I usually take off fat that's on the point while it's there. I don't take it all off, but I like to trim a little bit of it off. And I use this a Victoria Knox slicer. Uh, I use it for a lot, but we'll just get a little bit of this fat off. At this point, some of that silver skin. And I always am cutting this way and I'm, my hand's here. So when that thing goes through sometimes, it's like I said, it's nicked me a couple of different times. So it's kind of a pain being at a competition and your hands bleeding. So but yeah, I mean, I'm just gonna taking some of this hard fat off. You get too aggressive with it. Flip her over. Let's see what she looks like over here. Yeah, okay, it's got a lot of fat on her, which fat flavor, so that's good. Uh, so that's your deckle there. So I'll usually go in one of my first cuts when I get her over here. I'll come in here and uh, take some of that down. And I'll run my knife and do one fail sweep through there. That kind of gives me a little window. You can see a little window of what I'm working with as far as that's my point and that's my flat. So I'm going to separate this. Uh, I guess I'll take some of this off the top real quick. It's just so we can see. See some of this grain. See how the grains running, kind of running this way. I'll anchor down, see so if we can get some more off of it. Again, the knife's coming through me, but I got this guy, so. Almost got myself. I'm still jumping. usually come in here and take this directly against the grain. My grain's running this way. I'll kind of knock this off like that. That's going to be the end of my brisket there. And you can kind of see here what we're working with as far as the flat. So I got this cut here going this way. So I'll come back over here somewhere right about here up towards the top and I'll cut down and start moving my knife this way. And what I'm doing with this is I'm trying to see if you can see the flat here. You got the flat and the point, but you can see the flat still goes further down. So I'm gonna take it a little bit further and I'm just doing little cuts. You can still see the flat there, how it's still still there so I'm gonna go down a little more and I'm just gonna keep taking this guy we're starting to expose the end of that flap so we'll keep going just a hair more 
and this is going to be the top of my burn ends. I'll kind of come over here, kind of round it off. All this fat right here needs to come off my burn ends because that's going to be the top. I want to be able to put all my rub and have it stick. So I could separate it right now and trim all this off, but I just like doing it while it's attached. When you detach it, it gets harder, huh? I think it does get a little harder. That's Alonzo, Gulf Coast Smoke in the background. He's my cameraman today. Uh, <laughs> I think it's a little bit easier while it's still attached. This brisket's pretty cold. So I'll just keep coming in here. Uh, and you could use a different knife. I'm just used to this one. And you know, lots of guys use different knives. Uh, just whatever you're used to. But as you can see, I'm starting to, I'll even come in like this. Pressing down, just doing small cuts. Nothing real big. Maybe level it out a little bit. Because this is, I mean, for the most part, my burn ends, I'm gonna get my burn ends from this little area right in here. That's where they're gonna come from. But I've already kind of got, as you can tell, through there, you can see the fat. Uh, between the two pieces so at this point i can lay my knife down here you got that window right there you can see you can see right there and my knife's going all the way through it so i know I still got good burn ins there. The last thing I really want to do is I really don't want to nick the bottom. I like all this fat underneath this uh, flat. So at this point, I know that, man, for burn ins, I only really need six of them. So, yep. and I know my burn ins are going to come from right in here. So at this point, I can kind of whack her off. Mm -hmm. And we'll retrim this later, but we'll work on this flat. But she's already started, you know what I mean? To where uh, we'll clean that up next. We'll, we'll get this guy sorted. Uh, but that's going to be plenty. And that's your middling meat point right there, boy. Uh, and again, I want my grain, and I'm looking at this brisket. And the thickest part of my flat is right in here. So this side, I know I can pretty much lose that side. I still got some point meat underneath there. So, but I'm just kind of shaping it. Keeping an eye on where everything's at. I may flip this guy over like this and all that, it's got a lot of points. Keep spinning her around. Yeah, I'm just taking small cuts to start to level this guy out. It doesn't really bother me if there is some point meat underneath there, but I really want to, I want to get down to my flat. But what I don't want to do is scalp the flat. But if I do scalp it, man, I got plenty of flat over here fat that I can use, I can stick back underneath it when I'm cooking it. So I'll, I'll look at it again. And at this point, I'm just kind of looking at both sides. Oh, 
I'll probably take this mat off. And this is competition barbecue, so we're only looking for, you know, six or seven slices that we got to put in the box. Uh, kind of around the corners, a little get rid of the sharp edges. Sucker for this slicer. No. Starting to come together a little bit. Oh, yeah. I'll probably get some of this stuff off. I'm going to run my knife real quick to this home. Dick rapid edge. I don't know if you can see that. It's a dick rapid edge. <laughs> Made in Germany. It's got to be good, man. And then Germans know their knives, you know? So. So, do you have a certain width you're looking for or anything like that? Or are you just eyeballing it? I'm mostly eyeballing it, but I do use a caddy. I've been using a caddy, uh -huh. and I've just done so many of them. I don't know how wide that is, but I know that's kind of my width, what we're messing with right there. Sure. And I guess we could probably measure, but at the end of the day, I'm gonna stick it in this guy. I'm gonna put it in there and- uh, Yep. And this guy will fit this way in a half pan. Sure. So I'll have the flat there and the point over there to where even this guy right now is a little long you can see it's a little long uh so i'll even trim it down more to get it into mainly for me because i want i want to inject it and i want to have it all in the same pan in a full-size pan both my point and my flat so uh, and i don't get too crazy uh as far as silver skin, if there's a little bit of silver skin right here, it doesn't really bother me. Um, you can see a little bit there. Uh, I'll get some of the big stuff off, but I'm not gonna spend all day trying to get every little piece of silver skin off. And some of these guys, you know, if you get to digging too much, man, it could be a problem, you know? But I do like to round my edges here Make sure they're nice and brown there. I'll usually come back over here and make a cut. And look, see what I'm working with right there on that back side, uh, as far as the flat. Uh, and it's okay that it's got that fat. I mean, I want a little bit of fat on them. Uh, but I want to sleep at night. So, man, I cook a little brisket. And I'll also kind of come in here and kind of pivot that uh -huh. a little bit there. Take those little edges off there. Just to kind of give it a nice round shape all the way over, you know. Take some of that down. When I'm doing this too, I'm kind of trimming on this side and this side. I want it to be somewhat of a round hump there. Sure. That way when I flip it over, the brisket naturally kind of is higher in the middle. So I'll make sure, and even on this side, I'll kind of angle it to where. So that brisket will naturally, and this is point me, which is fine, but I do want to make sure that she's
she pumped the serpent thing, so uh like I say with that window you can kind of over here you can kind of see how much fat you're working with so it's a nice marbled brisket yeah well shit this guy's gonna work just fine you know uh get my little caddy out jam her in there but even still i'll probably Like I said, I do want to rest this guy inside of this pan. So, and that's a full size pan. That's a full size pan, and we'll uh, round these corners a little bit. I feel like maybe somebody who doesn't do this a lot might have been scared about this brisket because it had a lot of fat. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, this one, you know, and man, there. Are, I think Midland's got a couple of different packer plants. You know, different times they're different sizes, but. You know, usually a lot of them that you get, and the fat's already, the, the top's already taken off yep. a lot, but this yep. one did have a, a pretty big fat top on it. Uh, and I could take some of that off, but like I said, it's, uh, man, I'm cooking real hot. That stuff's gonna render. That Look. silver skin ain't gonna hurt nothing. Doesn't you know, bother you? Doesn't bother me at all. So we'll preload this guy into there. Boom. So then we'll pull that point back out. And we'll continue to take, this is the top. This back over here was the bottom of the brisket. Mm -hmm. So we'll continue to shake this guy up and take some of this, try to get all this fat off what I'm calling the top. Like I said, I'm always, a lot of times I am cutting this way towards myself using this hand so if the knife happens to hit which has done it a bunch i've cut my hand quite a few times I'm like, you know what i'm gonna order one of them freaking gloves <laughs> so i stopped cutting my hand yep uh, we'll look at this side we'll take some some fat over here, which I don't mind a little fat on the bottom. Uh, yeah, I was just about to ask you, you're okay with a little fat? Yeah, I'm okay with a little fat on the bottom of this guy. Uh, sometimes when you have these points, not on this one, but sometimes they'll have so much fat that it's like one side is harder than the other. Mm -hmm. And when that's the case, I I always trim mine to where this is the very end of the brisket. That was the part we whacked off. I always kind of V-shape them. Mm -hmm. Just my own little for my own muscle memory. And so I don't lose my orientation. Uh, I'll V-shape to where if I know that this side is harder fat than this side, and I know it's on the right side. So, because once it's cooked, man, you're not gonna be able to see anything. It's all gonna be bark and you won't be able to tell anything. And it's easy, if it, for me, if it's just a square piece, it's easy to get disoriented. So I always kind of be it here. That way, when it comes time for me to process, I know that this V in is the end of the brisket and I want my turn in slices to come from right in here. Not necessarily on the edge and when I, I'll cut this and cut that and I'll taste both sides. This one's got a little more fat over here. I may take a little bit more. Sometimes I'll even tenderize it myself. Just kind of pound it. Mm -hmm. 
kind of flatten her out. Uh, Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it, you know. Just got a little fat there. It's not that big a deal. It doesn't bother me at all. If anything, I can knock some of that fat off when I'm processing my burn ends. But it's a nice thick point. Uh, you can see this to the side. I'll grab another pan. So I'll vacuum seal all those trimmings and man we'll make burgers at the house. So I'll mix it with regular hamburger. And they don't want too rich of a burger my family. They like regular hamburgers. So but I'll go 50-50 with regular hamburger meat and uh, we'll grind that. My point will fit right there. And I always, a buddy of mine, Joe Webster, made me this caddy when I got seven, which was pretty cool. So I always have the seven on the right, and I know this is the, the flat end of the brisket, and this was more the point end because this meat over here is going to be a little more tender than this meat. Sure. Uh, but I'll fit it in there. And then I can inject both of them in this pan uh, and let it go overnight. So, there's my uh, competition separation of the point flat. So, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. And if you learned something or you liked it, leave a comment. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next one.